everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Thanks for joining me for this very special episode. So uh, unless you've been away from the TV for the past week or living in a cave or unconscious, uh, you all have been up to date with what's going on in my hometown, Houston, Texas, where I live, where I've lived for the past 13 years, my family has lived. And I apologize that I'm wearing glasses, but if you may be able to see in front of me, the bugs are just terrible here. And I have a swarm of them flying in front of my face right now. And I've, this is my third take and I've got three in my eyes. So please bear with me. If you want to see about the gardening part of this video, fast forward. If you want to hear the human part of the video and what I went through, uh, I want you to understand firsthand um, the devastation of the hurricane. So I'll go through my story relatively quick. So starting on last Sunday, uh, we were expecting Hurricane Harvey. I live in the southwest part of the city. The development that I live in, we lost 250 homes uh, to floods. The, the development next to my, me they lost 400 homes in floods due to the Brazos River overflowing its banks and the levees not holding. This was an 800 year flood, 800 year. It's one of biblical proportion, historical, it probably never will happen again. But it did happen. To give you just an idea of how much rain we got, we got between 40 and 50 inches in three days. To show you how much that is, it rained 61 inches all of last year in Houston, Texas, which is one of the wettest environments in the country. In uh, Seattle, Washington, it rains 37 inches a year, okay? We got 50 inches in three days, folks. So that pushed uh, the limits. So everything you saw on TV, on CNN or ABC or NBC was absolutely true. Let me tell you about my story. And what I want you to do is close your eyes and put yourself in this situation like myself or like of other, a, lot, a lot of other families. Now, fortunately, I'm blessed and I'm so fortunate to tell you my home was spared, okay? We have had um, no damage, no issues whatsoever. We were the lucky ones. Uh, I understand what people mean by survivor guilt now because I have a lot of guilt because I made it through without unscathed, but my neighbors lost their home completely. So we will be, I will be contributing significant funds to those that need help. I'll be contributing my time by helping them rebuild their houses. We'll be hosting families that are without a house, and I'll be giving my third car to a family until they get their, uh, their, their new car, I guess, because their car is completely damaged. I'll talk about that in a second. So on Sunday night, I was woken by my wife. I was sleeping, and she said, we got to get out now. It's a mandatory evacuation. The judge of Fort Bend County, Texas, evac said everybody's got to get out by tomorrow. The river will overflow. Um, and the levees won't hold. So much like you saw throughout uh, the city of Houston, New Orleans, and Katrina, that's what our house would be. So having said that, woken up at one o'clock in the morning, we had uh, six or seven hours, eight hours to get out, okay? And that's in addition to 50,000 other people that live in my area, my part of the area. Mandatory evacuation. So uh, first of all, um, if you first of all getting saying to get out's one thing trying to get out's another so anybody listening to this right now if you do not have a truck or a high suv you will not get out okay if you have a honda a toyota camry any regular car you're stuck the reason you're stuck is that you won't be able to navigate any of the roads your call car will stall because the exhaust will be in the water fortunately my wife has an suv and i have a truck we're able to get out i evacuated my two children my two black labs and the rest of my family and we left and locked our home for 13 years never knowing that if we would be flooded or not so we left we put we picked up as much as possible also imagine the average family the flood was five to seven feet so look around your house right now five to seven feet of water swamp mucky water flowing through your house what type of damage would that do think about uh your cars we have three cars all three would be ruined think about your pictures uh, your personal uh, valued items, all of that gone, damaged. Think about the mold. Uh, uh, if you live in uh, any humid area that will create in your house. So it's absolutely devastating. And thousands and thousands of families have been repla uh, uh, replaced. Now, we were fortunate. Uh, we had a truck to get out. Uh, we had good friends, Joyce and Aubrey, if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, you all mean the world to us. You came up and stepped in a time. They not only took my family, uh, they allowed us to stay at their house. They allowed my dogs to be there in the garage safe. 
that's another thing. If you have a pet, many pets weren't able to go because places wouldn't take them. You know, think about your pets. Look at your dog, your cat. You would have to leave them there, okay? In your house, they'd have to live in your second floor for at least a week, okay? Fortunately, we have friends, Aubrey and Joyce, that took us, and they mean the world to us. So thank you uh, if you're watching this, Aubrey and Joyce. So long story short, uh, we were able to come back after a week, okay? But the, the summary of what I want to say is that uh, and, and why we did not have more lives lost compared to Hurricane Katrina is real simple, okay? Uh, humanity. A ratio of 20 to 25 to 1, the average person helped out with their boats, helped out with their jet skis, and gave up their daily jobs, what they were doing. People came from Louisiana, Oklahoma, other parts of Texas with their jet skis, their flat boats, their fan boats, and assisted the official police, Navy, or excuse me, uh, National Guard, fire and other rescue people to get people out so they did not drown. And the lesson learned here, and I think you've heard it a thousand times, is it was so great. In the past two months, we've had such uh, uh, ugliness uh, with politics, with race relations, with places of origin, and all of that, I think everybody around here in Houston and the surrounding area said, it's got to stop. We all drown the same way. <clears throat> we all bleed the same way. So everybody, regardless of place of origin, <clears throat> religion, race, helped each other out. And hopefully we can carry that forward. And it's a great lesson for the rest of the country. So uh, thank goodness for the great people of Houston and the surrounding cities that helped out. We were fortunate. Others weren't as fortunate, okay? And I'll tell you, it's probably the most stressed I've ever been in my entire life. I've lost eight pounds, in case you can't tell on top of what I have. I just didn't eat. I didn't want to eat. I was so worried about my friends and family. Um, it was a disaster. So, you know, figure yourself in that situation. And if you live anywhere, it could happen to you. Trust me, okay? The weather's crazy these days. So if you're watching this, I'm going to get to the garden video in a second. I want to answer everybody's questions. That's what happened to us. Fortunately, we're safe. Others weren't. Um, so if, please, I'm going to tell you, and I may be trolled about this. I don't care, okay? Um, if you can contribute something, whether it's clothing, food, money, uh, go to the American Red Cross, find the Hurricane Harvey disease, uh, uh, a relief effort, and contribute to that. Um, a lot of people have also emailed me and said, uh, you know, we want to know where our money's going exactly. I'm going to put uh, a P.O. box at the, uh, at the video right now, and I'm going to put it in my description box. If you want to contribute to a family directory, one of the families in my daughter's soccer team lost their three cars in their entire home. They did not have flood insurance, okay? Homeowner's insurance doesn't cover floods, so they are completely out of a home, um, and they don't know where to go. So, again, I'm going to give them my car. We may house them. I'll be giving them funds. If you want to help out this family in need, uh, I'm going to put a P.O. box here. You can send whatever you want. Do not send cash, but send maybe a Target gift card, a Walmart gift card, uh, um, something gift card related. I promise I'll get it to the family, and I am uh, include your address because I'm going to have them send you a thank you letter. Whatever it is, whether it's a $5 Target card, $5 Walmart card, $500 card, $100, whatever, everything matters. Don't send clothing to my P.O. box. But just send things like gift cards um, that would be helpful or a gas card or just a general visa credit card i will get it to those families i promise you on that so that's all i want to say about Har Har hurricane harvey it's gonna unfortunately it'll take years for us to recover from this disaster but uh, let me get to the gardening part of the video that most of you tuned in to watch but that's my story if you can contribute thank you now on to the pepper and tomato plants all right, welcome back. Now to the garden part of the video. So these are the peppers that I transplanted. The ones on the left here are the shishito red peppers. Now they look a little bit wilted, but they will come back. I just, I'm trying to harden them off, so I put them in the sun for a little bit. Uh, but they're looking great. Much better than the other ones that I had. I showed you in my last video. I uh, was guilty of damping off, and they got a fungal disease and died. But these are doing very well, I promise you. And again, a reminder, uh, pepper plants do not like wet soil, okay? Just moist, a little bit moist, and they'll do fine, okay? That's that. Uh, from, uh, these are the Jimmy Nardello peppers that I'll be transplanting to these pots today. I'll show you that. Those are doing excellent too, excellent color. And boom, look at these. This is my um, uh, Orta seed starter. 
uh, and look at these things. These are going nuts. All of these have been indoors, okay? They've all been indoors. Now, remember the order seed starter, starter what I talked about? I was not planning on being away from the house and evacuating, certainly from a hurricane uh, this week, but I was gone for five days, and the Orta seed starter saved my tomato plants. So they've all done pretty well. They're a little bit leggy because uh, I didn't have a chance to adjust the light, but we'll show you how to accommodate that when we replant them in these containers, okay? So tomato plants doing great, pepper plants doing great. As I look to transplant my uh, tomato plants, I'm going to show you how I transplant them. Um, and as, as you've seen in a thousand other videos, as you'll see a close-up of the a tomato plant, they do have these little fine hairs all over uh, the stem. And that's part of the nightshade family. So what that means is that anywhere you see hairs, plant them relatively deep. Uh, and um, uh, that, those will turn into roots, okay? And give you a much healthier uh, tomato plant. It's kind of interesting if I look at these, you'll see some of these tomato plants are traditional. Uh, tomato leaves and then some of them on the um, brandywine appear to be uh, um, a potato leaf uh, leaves on the tomato plant. So I'm going to replant these. I'll come back, but everything's doing well. My plan is to get these into the garden probably in a week or two uh, once it cools down just a little bit here and the soil dries out a little bit. So um, hang tight and I'll show you what I did to replant a few of these. Okay, we're back. So here's what I did. I took all the tomato plants from the Orta seed starter uh, and transferred them. Look at beautiful. Everything grew great. If you don't have one of these, get one. Uh, I don't get paid. I don't endorse them, <clears throat> but they just work great, especially if you travel a lot. So here they are. So I transferred everything over. Everything's looking pretty good. Some of them are looking a little bit limp because when you take things out of the uh, each seed cell for the Orta seed starter, sometimes you have to cut tomato plants in half and they get a little limp just like if you and I had a scrape or a broken arm we would uh, go in a little bit of shock too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these as you see I planted them fairly deep now um, you'll see I have two different size pots this size and then this size okay <clears throat> these uh, brandy wines were huge so I had to put them in a bigger pot and I probably I still need two weeks before I go outside so it's going to be a race against time I want to wait till the heat gets down at night a little bit so the plants don't deal with issues but uh, the other thing which is pretty cool, look at this silver fir. One of my listeners told me to get the silver fir. Look how cool that leaf is. That's a, it's a tomato that produces like five or six ounce tomatoes. Look how cool that is. It's like a fir tree uh, leaf. And um, anyway, the rest are traditional leaves. So everything's been replanted. I took the temporary leaves off. I always cut those off. And I went as deep as I could. Uh, not as deep as I wanted, but I have to use what I have. I didn't have a lot of time to prep for this because of the hurricane, but these things will do fine. I just have to buy myself another one or two weeks before I get these outside. Uh, I'm gonna put these inside. I'm gonna show you my new uh, gift to myself I just bought, and uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these here in a second. So here are my two uh, indoor seed starters. You'll see one that I got from Gardeners. You've seen the Gardener Supply one before. That's it, it works fairly well. I use it with the heat map, it's two feet. Now this is my new one, okay? I got the jump start from, uh, I think a greenhouse mega store. So this is a pretty cool system. You see that there's um, four light bulbs. Uh, I'll show you underneath. So see, there's four light bulbs underneath. Uh, the plants all fit in there. It's a two foot one, it fits well in my bedroom. I think it was $155. I think from Greenhouse Megastore, but the thing, uh, uh, it, it's, as, as usual, it's on a timer back there, so it, it goes on and off, but these things will stay in here for the next two weeks. I give it about 10 to 11 hours of sun a day, or light a day. The thing I don't like, and I thought they had it, but I thought these poles adjusted, they don't. And you can put it on a system like here and adjust it, but there's two ways to lift things from the bottom and from the top down so uh, I just put something under it and I'll just uh, keep removing that so the uh, plants don't get too leggy but here they are I have transplanted my tomatoes they'll be in here for two weeks again here's my new setup it's pretty cool there and then I'm going to transplant the peppers here in a second now just a word of caution when you transplant tomatoes they're relatively hardy so they're pretty tough they'll rebound some of them look a little limp now but they'll rebound nicely pepper plants you got to be a little more careful you can't necessarily separate pepper plants from each other from the roots and tear them apart because they will die uh, easily. So I'm going to replant those pepper plants you saw 
put them into that, those lights, and then we'll close it up. So here's those Jimmy Nardello plants that were in the uh, Tupperware tub. So I did successfully cut them. Uh, I only kept the five strongest in my mind. Again, this Jimmy Nardello plant pepper is the best tasting pepper uh, that you can possibly uh, get for sweet peppers. Um, and I'll have uh, five of them. So uh, they're going to stay under this grow light for a while, looks like. They transplanted fairly good. That's this is uh, 10 minutes after I transplanted. No major wilting no major signs of damping off but we'll see so i'll put those under the lights you know the great thing and i've said this before about starting your own seeds is that when, when you go to your home depot your lowe's your local garden center you, know, you buy what they want is convenient for them to sell or what bonnie's plants which is the supplier for home depot and low has available um, so when everybody else is buying um, the early girl and the big bush and the things that dominate 90% of the marketplace, uh, I will be uh, enjoying uh, peppers that nobody has. Jimmy Nardello, Shishido peppers, uh, silver fir tomatoes, um, Brandywine, Sudith uh, tomatoes, Big Rainbow tomatoes, Cherry Fountain tomatoes, Cello tomatoes, and the like. So that's a great thing. Variety is the spice of life. So uh, I'm really excited about that. That's why you grow your own seeds. So again, I'll need to keep these in for two, two weeks longer, but the peppers were a successful transplant as I showed you and the tomatoes. So we're all good. These will sit here for the next week or two. I'll give you an update here shortly. So everybody, that's my episode for today. Thanks for joining me at the end of a week, which has been an incredibly stressful week for everybody here in Houston, including myself. And that kind of brings me back to my whole channel, why I started gardening. It was to get rid of stress. So getting, black, getting back, replanting my plants, my seedlings, and sharing that with you makes me feel good for a little bit. And it takes away the stress. And that's why I started the channel. So whether you are busy, a mom, or you're busy at work, or you have other stressors in your life because of health or hurricanes or earthquakes or other issues with friends, Get in the garden. It does help to relieve stress. Again, uh, if you can, please donate to anybody, any contribution in Houston. I'll leave uh, my uh, PO box at the bottom in case you want to contribute a gift card to the family that plays soccer with my daughter. That'd be great. In the meantime, we'll see you in a week or two. God bless everybody. Thanks for your thoughts and prayers for everybody here in Houston. Talk soon.